Hello everyone, this is Adam Schaefer of TechnologyOrDie.com. Today I'm going to be talking to you about user interface customization in macros to extend the functionality of this DX80 endpoint. As you can see on screen, the standard D, uh, DX80 has just a single green call button that users use to uh, place and receive calls and view call history. Let's change this functionality by jumping into the web interface. Under the integration tab, there's a few options to select from. In-room controls are the graphic user interface components. We'll be looking at these first. Second, we'll be looking at the macro editor and writing actual JavaScript code that is used to interface with the codec and uh, perform useful functions. In-room controls, we want to launch the editor. When we launch the editor, we're faced with a display like this by default. There's no panels or objects created so far, and the interface is giving us a pretty good indication of where we want to start. I'll add my first panel objects object. As you can see, it has a name called panel. We'll change this and just call it uh, button one in this case. This is going to appear on our display as a button on the touch panel. Uh, we'll leave the, uh, the light bulb icon and we'll make it color orange. The panel ID can be customized. We'll just call this button one. When this button is selected, a page will open or a panel will open and this panel can have multiple pages. As you can see, I can add multiple pages. I can name them, and each page can have customized widgets added. Each of these widgets has a name, widget, underscore, a unique number. You can, of course, customize these as well. In this case, I'm actually going to delete both of the pages. I want to keep a very simple interface, and I want to make a button that just performs a single function without any major extended functionality. I can delete both pages, and I'll be left with something about like you see here. I want to go back into panel options here and make sure the panel is available always. The other options are, of course, only in a call uh, or in, and out of a call. When I'm done editing the user interface, I can go to the upper right hand corner and use the export configuration to video system. We get an export OK confirmation, assuming all things go well, and your button should now be deployed. As you can see, the button that we deployed, called button 1, is defined in a, and appears on our user interface. The second key piece to our room integration is to go into the macro editor and build the macro, uh, write the code that will actually execute the functionality that we're looking for. In this case, I have some code preloaded. Uh, you're welcome to download this from my GitHub site. I have this posted out there or something very similar to this posted out there, maybe with a few modifications. Uh, this code is strictly for demonstration only. There's no major practical value to it. Uh, I want to start by drawing your attention to probably the most important element of this, of this whole uh, this whole macro and that is the XAPI object. Uh, the XAPI object is created at the top of the code. You're probably going to want to do this toward the top of the file typically. Uh, the XAPI is something that has been part of Cisco's telepresence endpoints really since uh, since the Tamburg days. Um, and it uh, still holds true today on the DX80. The XAPI, to best understand the XAPI, I'm going to open up a ter terminal window where I'm, I'm logged in to the uh, DX80 via command line. Uh, you're going to want to do log output on. And this turns on logging. Whenever someone interacts with the DX80, as you can see, I just brought it out of uh, standby state. 
Uh, and if you recall, there was a, a button that we added in the previous uh, video, or, in, or earlier in this video. When you press the, the button, or any, enter, any uh, user interface entity, it creates a log event. In this case, user interface extension panel clicked. And some additional information about that was that the panel ID is button one. With that being said, let's jump back to our, uh, our macro and look at where that might be useful. At the very bottom, I have the XAPI event on function. And you might recognize this, user interface extensions panel clicked. When this user interface event uh, occurs on the system, it uses what's uh, what I believe is called a JavaScript callback function. Again, I'm no developer, but it references uh, test function three. In test function three, I'm actually invoking the XAPI again and issuing a command. This specific command uh, is displaying an alert on the screen of the unit. Again, you're welcome to use this code and modify it and call the other functions that I have uh, built out here. I'm not going to demonstrate them all, but I do want to reference function one to further show you the value of uh, being able to leverage this XAPI. So I have uh, updated and saved that to function or to test one, the test one function. And you can see it is uh, gathering the event variable and then it is console logging that variable. So let's hit the button again on our touch panel. We'll hit it a few times and you can see <clears throat> each time that that user interface object is interacted with by a user there's information uh, passed into uh, the uh, into the, the macro that we can then take useful actions with. This again matched that same XAPI information that we gathered from the command line that we can then use in our applications. A good, for instance, might be uh, a, an if statement. If panel ID equals button one, do something, right? It could be a button to uh, initialize a call to another endpoint. It could be a button to, to mute the system. It could be a button to interact with a room control system that may control the blinds, the lights. Uh, it may uh, invoke some other function, you know, change the display or so forth. Uh, really, the sky is the limit. The main thing to know is the XAPI. To get further information on the XAPI, Cisco has included an introduction with some basic uh, information about the, the program or the development environment, as well as an XAPI reference for all of the key systems, and of course some examples on how to interact with the XAPI through the JavaScript-based macros that uh, are readily available. For more information, be sure to keep track of Technology or Die on our blog page as well as on GitHub. There'll be additional examples and additional uh, useful code items as well that'll be published from time to time. So uh, feel free to contribute, to comment, and to ask questions. I hope that you have found this as a useful introduction to the very basics of XAPI and uh, macro programming on Cisco DX80 endpoints.